So what's the one thing that you absolutely must have in a survival or SHTF scenario? Let's talk about it. So the list of things that you could use in an SHTF scenario are honestly endless. There's, there's always more preps to get. There's always something else you could use. We're always working on something new. So what's the most important thing if it does go down, if it does hit the fan? Um, there's a couple things that instantly come to mind, but I'm not sure they're the number one. Um, one of the first things that come to mind is obviously stored food. That's, that's just a given. But what about other things like some kind of electricity source, you know, some kind of solar generator? What about seeds? Do you have some place to grow? Are you storing seeds? You should have just bulk seeds with your preps just in case it hits the fan that are just sitting there just for your preps. You know, it's not even for the garden this year. What about self-defense? That's definitely in the top five, but I don't think it's number one. Self-defense is key though. You have to be able to protect your preps. I've seen people saying ridiculous comments like, oh, I'll just take prepper's stuff when it hits the fan. Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. Good freaking luck. That's all I got to say. So that's, that's definitely on the list. Self-defense for you and your family. You have to be able to protect yourself. I know not every country has that luxury, which is a shame. It's a human right, human self-right. But if you live in America or a country where you can at least get some kind of self-defense for yourself, you know what I'm talking about, get it. Get the best thing you can get it. Get the best thing you can get and get lots of munitions for it. That's all I got to say. And real quick, guys, I truly believe life's a blessing. You know, like I don't, I don't make these videos to scare people. I make these videos because... I'm so thankful for life. I'm so thankful for where I live, the opportunities I have. I don't want to lose it, you know? Like, I, I see what's happening. I see everything that I have. And I, I want my kids to have the same opportunity. You know, I have little kids. I'm worried that the world's going to just be different when they grow up, you know? So that's why I have such a sense of urgency. It's not to scare people. It's just because... I, I'm so grateful for what we have. I don't want to lose it, you know, and I'm, I'm super grateful for you guys also for watching my videos, commenting, everything, saying you, you're sending your blessings. It really helps a lot, guys. Thank you so much for everything. What about cooling and heating for your family? Have you thought about that? We talked a little bit about that in a couple of videos ago, talking about EMPs, but have you seriously considered it? Do you seriously have a plan? Some places it gets extremely cold, deathly cold in the winter. Some places it gets deathly hot. So you have to have a solution for both. What are you gonna do? Do you have some kind of cooling system? Do you have some kind of heating system in your house? Um, most of the country, you're probably gonna be most worried about um, heating during the winter because you can open your windows, you can get a breeze, you could at least get outside and get away from it. The number one thing though, is this is gonna sound so obvious, but I feel like it's often overlooked, water. Do you have a water source that's not dependent on someone else, some kind of government body to send it to your house? I know we can get bottled water, all these different things, but that's, that's not gonna last long, guys. And that stuff's terrible for you. It has tons of chemicals and plastics in it. That's a whole nother subject, but bottled water is just, it's not gonna last. You need an actual natural resource of water, like a well or a spring or a river or a stream. And I know, oh, I live in the city, all this stuff. Well, if you're planning on bugging out, find uh, the nearest like river, stream, something like that near you. That's like low key too, that not many people know about off the beaten path somewhere, a little stream. And if, you are, if you're going this route, if you're really serious about water, you need to have water filtration too. Um, <clears throat> those little tubes, those little Sawyer life straws, I believe they can filter like 10,000 gallons of water for like $20 and you can just drink straight up pond water almost with the 
So you, at least you won't get sick and die. It might still be gross. It'll still be contaminated, possibly with like heavy metals and things like that. But the bacteria that gives you diarrhea and could potentially kill you in that situation will be filtered out. So that's what you're most worried about. You can drink dirty water. You can't drink water with bacteria in it. So get, get one of these life straws, these Sawyer straws, something like that, bare minimum. They're like 20 bucks. If you're really serious, you can get like a Berkey water filter or something like that. But that's if you have like a homestead and you have some kind of reliable source of water. But if you're planning on bugging out, this was our plan a couple years ago. Um, we, we were planning on possibly bugging out because we were way more urban, way more in the city. And one of the first things we got with the, was those life straws. They're critical, guys. Critical. That's, that's the one thing you can eat. People have not eaten for 30 days and they can still survive. You can, you can go a few days without water and you're gonna, you're gonna die. So it's the most important thing over everything. Electricity, food preps, gardening. Do you have a water source? Cause that's, that's the key to it all. You can't even garden if you don't have water. You can't grow crops. You can't feed your animals. Cows, oh, you have cows, you have animals. They drink a ton of water, a ton incredible amount this is a thousand pound animal thousand plus pound animal ton animal sometimes this is a big drain on your water system so you don't if you don't have something natural like a well that can like be replenished then it's going to be really hard to do any kind of homesteading you're you know and if you're bugging out find your locations where these streams, these rivers, these little low-key springs and stuff like that are so you know where it is and you can get your water. I know I keep saying this, but it's just absolutely true. Get out of the city if you can. I know not everybody can, but if you have the opportunity to leave, please leave. The city is going to be a death trap in any SHTF scenario, survival scenario. Look at, look at what happened already. All the cities were locked down. The city was not where you wanted to be when all these things were happening. The rural areas, I like. I didn't really notice much of a difference in rural communities the past two years. So the city's where the control is. The city is where they can choke you out, manipulate you. Some other things you really need to think about stocking up on that are just not exactly on the front of everyone's radar is simple things like clothes and shoes shoes in the great depression were very valuable people made them last five years you know a pair of shoes a pair of boots they would patch them and glue them and put new soles on them shoes were really hard to come by clothes were patched um you know you didn't just like get new things all the time so try to stock up clothes for your kids you know they're going to be growing they're going to be growing into new sizes all the time. You don't want to have them stuck with just little kid clothes or something. So these are just other things you can think about. They're not at the top of the list, but they're on the list, you know, and the list has just hundreds of things on it. So let me know what you guys think. Do you have a water source? Do you have something reliable that can keep your family hydrated? Those 20 pound bags of rice, they need a lot of water to cook them and boil them and they also need a wood stove to cook it so you know it's like we have to think of every like how life's really gonna be in this situation because it's just gonna be so much different it's hard to really think about it and think about what we need to adapt and adjust to be prepared for that so let me know what you guys think do you have a reliable water source um do you have at least those little life straw sawyer filters something along those lines so if you have to bug out you can get water that's the bare minimum requirement if you want to at least be partially prepared um so let me know what you guys have you know that that 20 pound bag of rice it takes a lot of water to cook that it also takes a stove and fire and heat to boil it so we need to think of this all the way through of what life's really going to be like in an shtf scenario because it's just, it's life could be so much different that it's hard to even imagine. You know, there's always a new scenario and we don't know how it's gonna happen. It could be slow motion, it could be quick. It could be, 
you know what I mean? There's a, there's a bunch of different scenarios of how this could happen. It could be a dollar collapse. It could be a food collapse. It could be war. So we need to just be prepared for all of it. So thank you guys for watching. You guys have a blessed day. And I hope everyone's getting prepared, getting their stuff, getting their homestead ready, getting their goods, get those life straws. And you guys have a blessed day, guys. Thank you.